Pastor Lau and Pastor Dala Hapasit would like to welcome you to the following message from New Hope International Church in Seattle, Washington. Here is Pastor Lau's anointed teaching that will change your life with love, hope, and peace in Jesus Christ. And now, Pastor Lau. Are you ready to hear the Word of God? Amen. How many people love the Word of God? Yes. Amen. I am the kind of person that loves the Word of God very much. And I promise God, since I was a young believer and also become a pastor, that the Word of God will be my standard and my truth, my way of life. Everything I think, everything I say, everything I do, I will go back to check with the Word of God. And the same thing in this church, we want to go to the Word of God and do what the Word of God say. Jesus say that if we love him, we obey his commands. So as Christians, we need to know the word and we need to obey his command, not out of legalistic spirit, not because of the religious ritual thinking, but because of the relationship with Jesus Christ, we love him. As Christians, we have to be careful with the way we make comments because when we make a comment out of our own opinions, It may cause people to misunderstand our God. Every comment we make should not be our own opinion, but it should come from the Word of God. Don't let your emotion, don't let the circumstances, and even your experiences to dictate your life. But the Word of God should be the truth, should be the foundation. Remember Jesus said that if you build your house on the sand, when the storm, the wind comes, the Flood comes, your house will fall. So we don't want to be Christian that depend on emotions and experiences and, and man's idea and opinions. We should not say, okay, this is what I think. We should always say, this is what the Word of God say. And this is what God has taught me. So that should be the lifestyle of every Christian. We should go back to the Word. And that's what I like to do, is to preach the Word of God. And we want to see our brother and sister in the church live according to the Word. Build your house on the rock. When you know the Word and you practice the Word, that house will not fall. You will stay to the end. And we will keep our salvation to the end. Amen? Amen. Let's hear the Word of God together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your Word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, our teacher. Lord, I'm a just mere man and just a normal man, Lord. I cannot do this preaching without your help, without your Holy Spirit, Lord. Oh, Lord, come and anoint all of us, Lord, and speak to us by your Spirit, Lord. May the floodgate of heaven be opened this morning, and you will, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon this congregation, and you will change life today, transform people, Father, by your word and by your power, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We have been talking about the goodness of God, and I enjoy this series of teaching very much because it has changed my life. I want to encourage you to go back to listen to Lesson 1, Lesson 2, Lesson 3. We already taught six chapters, and today will be the seventh chapter. Go back to listen again and again because it will help you to get deeper and deeper into the revelation and the truth of God. Don't listen one time because faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Exodus chapter 33 verses 18 to 19 talk about the goodness of God. And he said, and Moses said, please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness Pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Moses pleaded with the Lord to see and experience the glory. What does it mean, the glory, or the word kabod in Hebrew language? The word the glory means the manifestation of the presence of God or the thick presence of God that man can feel, man can experience, and man can see or hear the manifest presence of God, like the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire. So many times when we talk about the glory, the word the glory or kabod, 
We thinking about experiences. We thinking about falling under the power. We thinking about laughter, the joy of the Holy Spirit. We thinking about having goosebumps and feel the cloth of the presence on your body. You feel you. Sense the presence of God, which we are not against all those things, which is good. We need to feel. We need to learn how to walk in the tangible presence of God. But even though Moses asked the Lord to see the glory, look at what the Lord answered him. He said that I will make all my goodness pass before you. Did God have bad ears? Did God have problem with communication with Moses? Was there any breaking down of communication? He asked for the glory, but the Lord said, "My goodness will pass before you." So there is a strong connection between the glory and the goodness of God. When God shows up, His whole attribute, His whole character show up at the same time. When Pastor Da show up. Her character show up too. Her smile, her attitude, her motive, the way she talk, the way she move, every attribute of Pastor Dad show up. Therefore, when the glory of God shows up, His goodness shows up because He is the good God. All of His goodness show up when the presence of God shows up. So we need to understand that when we welcome the glory of God, the goodness of God shows up as well. That's why. In the house of Obed Edom, in the Old Testament, when he welcomed the Ark of the Covenant, in that generation, the presence of the Spirit of God was not everywhere. It was only in certain people, like the king, the priests, and the prophets, and also the thick presence of God was in the Ark of the Covenant. When the Ark of the Covenant shows up in the house of Obed Edom. The goodness of God shows up there, and the Bible said that that house was blessed for three months to the point that King David could not stand that anymore. He said, "That blessing belonged to me. I'm going to get the Ark of the Covenant back into my place, into my house." So King David sent his people to take the Ark of the Covenant. That's why the church and every family and every believer. Should welcome the presence of the glory of God. When the glory of God come and show up in your life, touch you, fill your home, fill the church, it will come with the goodness of the Lord. The Lord love to see the church that welcome the glory of God, welcome the tangible outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Lord love to see His people come out to the prayer line and get touched by the glory of God. The devil would do everything to get people out from the prayer line, get out from the glory of God. He would use all kind of human reasoning. Oh, waste of time! This is messy. People get touched. It's so messy. People say, "I don't need this stuff because I'm okay. I'm good. I don't need the glory of God." Actually, all these attitudes cause people to miss the goodness of God because in the glory there is the goodness. All of my goodness show up, and why do we need the glory? Why do we need the goodness of God? Because you cannot give, you cannot spend what you don't have. Is that right? So you can do good to people when you have the goodness of God in you, with the goodness that He has given you. So the more you receive the goodness and the glory, the more you can show good to people. You can do good for other people. You heard the word, glory to God, glorify God. You heard that word. When you get touched by the glory and the goodness of God fill your life, you will say, "Praise God, glory to God." Amen. I praise God every day. I say glory to God every day because God's goodness is upon my life, is upon my family, upon my kids and my works and my practice every single day. So I can say glory to God, and then when we have the goodness, we can share the goodness with other people, and when they receive the goodness from God through our hand, they will say glory to God. So who gets the glory? God gets the glory eventually. That's why the church need to welcome the glory and welcome the goodness of God. Sickness 
and disease will not give glory to God. Poverty and lack will not give glory to God. The work of the devil will not give glory to God. It will give honor to the devil. But we want to welcome the goodness of God so that we can give glory to God. God is good. Amen. Look at what King David. I review one more time from Psalm chapter 34, verses 1 to 2. This whole chapter talk about the goodness of God and how to receive the goodness of God. Psalm 34, verses 1 to 2. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make it boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. If you want to Walk in the presence of God and in the glory of God all the time. You need to be the kind of people who really value God and praise God. The Bible says God enthroned the praises of His people all day long. Morning, evening, afternoon, you just think about honoring God, praising God. The worship song come out from your mouth and your heart feel of the Attitude of God, you're so valuable to me. I love you. I praise you. You do that all day long. You welcome the presence of God. He enthroned the presence of his people. And when the presence of God shows up, when the glory of God fills your life, the goodness will come at the same time. And you're going to walk in the goodness of God all day long, Monday to Sunday, seven days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the time, because you're the type of person that praise God. I love God. I value the goodness of God. I love God so much. You can do that only when you are humble, because the humble will depend on God. But the pride will put their fist up to God and say, I don't need God. I can manage my life myself. So we need to be humble. We need to praise God like King David all the time. How many people want to live your life that way? Praise God all the time. Live your life that you exalt God, glorify God, thank God all the time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm chapter 34, verses 3 to 10, the Bible continues to say, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. I like what the Bible always say, all, all, all the time, all my goodness, all the trouble, all things. Good things. God cover every aspect of life. All. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, test and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. God is so good that he can deliver us from the problem and trouble of lack and poverty. We don't need to stay poor forever. God can deliver us from lack and poverty, the problem of late bill payment, the problem of house payment troubles, the problem of car payment troubles. The Lord not only help us from, deliver us from the problem of poverty, the Lord also deliver us from all kinds of troubles. One day, I believe, when we go to heaven and watch our own live Blu-ray movie, We will find out that so many times the angel of the Lord deliver us from fatal accidents. Actually, you should have got into the accident, but the Lord delivered you out and you did not die soon. Did you not die young? He delivered you from the tsunami. He really saved you. He protects you. He will keep you all the way until you run you are raised all the way through and you finish your course all the way through with joy. I expect my life that I will run my race all the way through and I will finish my course of what God called me to do all the way with joy. And one day when I finish my course, the Lord will take me back to heaven and I will smile and I say, I get my job done on earth here, it's done. And I will go to heaven. I will not die young. I will finish my course. And everyone say, I will finish my course as well. I will run my race. 
to the end. It's important to say this. Let's confess one more time. Some of you sit <laughs> chewing some gum. You should say it because you speak life into your life. I will finish the course of my life with joy. All the way I run my race. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord encamps around us, all the angels who protect us. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to believe that. 9 to 12, the Bible says, Oh, fear the Lord. You, he sings. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. I like that. Shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? When we read all this scripture, we can see certain key of living in the goodness of God. Test and see the goodness of God. You can see that David says so many times, those who trust the Lord shall not lack any good things. I just finished writing a sermon called Trust the Lord with All Your Heart. And it's been typed right now by somebody. And I will preach one day. It's so good to learn about to trust God. If we live a life of trusting God with all our heart. And second key, fear the Lord. We need to fear God. We need to say yes to God and don't play game with God. If we trust the Lord and fear God, we will not lack any good things in our life. Everyone say, I trust the Lord with all my heart. And I fear the Lord. Amen. Amen. And now God comes with a question to all of you. Who is the man? Who is the woman in this room? And listen to this teaching. The desire life. And love many days that he or she may see good. So the question come up, who in this room desire to have good life? When we say desire life, mean life is so good. You enjoy it. And also see many good days, not only long life, many days of life, but those days are good. How many people want to live long life? With many, many good days and see many good things all this long life. How many want to do that? Raise your hand up. If you don't raise your hand, what it means? I try to interpret your, your idea, your thinking. How many people want a long life? But not a long life with your body in the bed in the hospital, with the IV line, and with sickness and disease. You want to have a long life with many good days. Enjoy life. We want to talk about how we're going to live a long life. How we're going to have many good days of life. The Bible continues to say in verse 13, Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. So the first principle of how to live a long, long life, see many good days and enjoy life, is to watch your mouth. Your mouth and your tongue is one of the biggest factors to determine whether you have a good life or you will have a bad life. Whether you have a short life or you have a long life. Everyone point to your mouth. This is a factor. Your mouth. Okay? So you need to watch your mouth. There is a true story of a man in the late 30s. This man suddenly became sick was admitted to the hospital and he became comatose or under coma in a comatose state. And his Christian friends went to the hospital, many friends and pastor went to the hospital and keep praying for him, gather around him. They pray and prayed and prayed. But eventually the man died. One of his Christian friends asked his pastor, what is going on here? Why this man died so young and God did not answer the prayer. The pastor answered, Please don't tell anybody. This is what the Holy Spirit chose me. When you hear this story, you understand what we should do in life. Spiritual laws were set in motion long ago for this man. 
and they cannot be changed at this time. They cannot be changed because the man already sick and become comatose. He cannot speak anymore. He cannot change his faith. He is u n d e r s t a t e that he cannot change the situation. The spiritual law has been set in motion, and it's too late to change. This young man, when he was young, he played with his brother in the barn, and he told his brother, "I believe I will die before 40 years old." And the brother say, "Why did you say that?" And the man answer, "I knew in my heart I would die before 40 years old." All of his life, since he was young, he kept telling everybody, "I would die before 40 years old." And it happened. He died at 39 and a half years old in the ICU. His word already by the spiritual law set things in motion. A couple of days ago, somebody called me from another state, wanted to know Jesus. I tried to witness on the phone. And he said that if God is so loving and God is so good, why so many people get into trouble in the world? Why so many calamity and uh, problems and killing and a lot of poverty and sickness? And I told him the answer: It's not God's will for those things to happen, but there is a spiritual law that you cannot change. When you jump out of the building, your body gonna go down to the ground. That is the physical law, we call the law of gravity. And in the spiritual world, there are also spiritual laws: the law of death and the law of life. And we need to choose the spiritual law of the Spirit of God, which will bring life and peace and joy. This man said to the pastor, the friend said to the pastor, "No, this is just a coincidence." The pastor answered, "I don't think you like to hear this thing." But there is a spiritual law in the world today. The spiritual law of death has been set in motion since this man said that he would die before 40 years old, and he never changed his word since then. By the time he was dying, he was coma, and he could not change it because he cannot change his word. He already become comatose. There is the curse of short life. Some time grandparents die young, parents die young. And then the kids die young as well. We call the curse because of that curse. Because the spiritual law of death, the devil will come at the right timing and say, "Now is your time. I'm gonna take your life right now before 40 years old." But when we are born again, the good news. Now I will talk about the good news. That is the bad news. The curse is the bad news. The good news is if you really born again, if you really have the blood of Jesus in you, you have faith. And you learn how to speak positive about yourself. You can declare, "I will not die, but I will live to declare the works of the Lord." You can say that with long life, the Lord will satisfy me and show me His salvation. When you keep speaking like that, you set in motion God's spiritual law of life by your mouth. You speak positive. You set the law in motion. So when the devil come to you, for example, if your dad died at 45 years old of heart attack or brain cancer, and the devil will come to you around 42, 43, and want to give you something bad to kill you, and you say, "I shall live. I shall not die, and I will shall declare the work of the Lord with long life. God will satisfy me." And I will declare, I will see the salvation of the Lord. You set in motion, the devil back off because he cannot break the spiritual laws of life of God. And the spiritual law of life of God is greater than the law of death of the enemy. You can change your destiny. You can change the way you live because how you speak. Therefore, we learn from this lesson that. From now on, before you get into trouble like this man who became comatose, we should speak good health, speak long life, speak prosperity, speak joy, speak strength, speak good family, speak about your kids that they will do well, they will serve the Lord. Don't speak sickness, don't speak poverty, don't speak failure and death, but keep your mouth speaking only the promises of God. The things that God mentioned in the Bible, Amen. And when you keep saying those words, you set in motion the spiritual law of life of God by your mouth. 
Then your life will turn around to have a long life, good life, and see many good days in your life, and no one can change it. Amen. Even your enemy hate you and try to curse you, say, "Oh, he's gonna die young." You say, "Sorry, the spiritual law has been set in motion. You cannot curse me. You cannot change me. The devil cannot do anything to you." Everyone say, "I will watch my mouth." From today on, I will speak positive, speak life to myself, to my family, to my spouse, to my children, to my church, to my job, to my study, everything around me. Amen. And if you say like that, you will notice that God saved you from many car wrecks. God save you from any sickness, or maybe you get sick, and then suddenly God heal you because you live a long life. God will help you. The law has been set in motion. Amen. Are you excited about that? Yes. Is that the lifestyle we're gonna live? Yes. We're gonna speak like that. Yes. The lifestyle of speaking positive. Amen. The Bible say, keep your tongue from evil. Don't speak bad. Speak good. The goodness of God. What good God want to do to us. The second principle: end your lips from speaking deceit. A simple word means telling a lie. If we want to live a long life, we should not tell lies. Telling lies can shorten your life. Deception, speaking deceit, manipulation, use technique to deceive people. All this can cause you to live a short life and face many bad days. So you need to. Make a determination that from now on you will not lie, you will not speak deceit, and you will not use manipulation with your words to deceive people, to lure people to do something for you. You should be honest, speaking the truth in love, and you shall live a long life and have many days, see many days of your life. Amen. Amen. Second principle: don't lie. One, don't speak evil. Number two, don't lie. Number three, verse fourteen. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. When we stop doing evil and begin to do good, what happened? We sow good. S O W. We sow good. There is a both physical or natural law and also spiritual law. The law of sowing and reaping. There is a seed time sowing and the harvest time reaping. That's what the Bible say. So we can sow bad and reap bad, or we can sow good and reap good thing. That's why the Bible say, "Depart from evil and do good." The Bible say clearly that if you want to live a long life, if you want to see many good days, many good things happen to you, you begin to do good or sow good. In First Peter chapter three verses ten to eleven, New Testament say the same thing. For he who would love Life. Have you ever heard people say, "I hate my life. I hate it. I hate life." You know, when people say "hate life," mean they en- don't enjoy life. Life is miserable. Every day, wake up with long face, sour attitude, and complain, and have bad face, and look very negative, and never smile, never laugh. People don't enjoy life. They hate life. But the Bible says, "Who want to love life? Who want to enjoy life and see good days? Let him refrain." His tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Peter quote from Psalm chapter thirty-four. If we want to enjoy life, enjoy life means that we don't lie in the hospital in the delirious state with many tube in the body, tube in the throat, tube in the bladder, tube in your lung, and dying. That is not a Good enjoying life, good life. Enjoying life doesn't mean that you lose sleep at night. Every night, could not sleep. I see a patient a few days ago. She said that she has not been able to sleep for more than ten years. She has pain all over her body. She feel dizzy. She could not sleep, and she come to me to seek better surgical treatment will help her that she can sleep. And I say I can investigate. But at the end, I told the husband and wife that the doctor can do so much. But I want to encourage you. To seek Jesus and get goodness of God in your life, so you can sleep again. So I share the gospel a little bit, but it's up to them. 
I did my part to say that God is the answer for you. I can perform surgery, but you may be to lose sleep. Some people cannot sleep because they know that the next day they will lose everything. They will lose their wives, their kids. They will lose their home. Some people not don't have a good day because some bad things happen to their children. But God say that I want you to have good days. I want you to enjoy life, a long life. God's will is good. God is good. He want good to happen to us. He never intend for us to have bad things happen. But we need to really follow what the Bible say. That is to keep our mouth away from evil. Don't lie. And also do good things. Verses 12 to 14, the Bible continues to say in 1 Peter chapter 3. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. This scripture teaches that the way you live really determines the outcome of your life. If you do evil all the time, you will not have good life, even though you are a believer. Listen carefully. Our salvation does not depend on good works. We will never do good works enough to go to heaven. We are safe to go to heaven and sins are forgiven by the grace of God. And we receive that grace through faith. No one is perfect in this room. We make mistakes. We make some mistakes sometimes. We fail sometimes. That's why we cannot go to heaven by our good works. But good works and bad works determine how we're going to live on earth here. That's why I don't like some loose gospel that is being preached in America and all over the world right now. That gospel say, we save by grace. It's okay, I'm saved. You can do whatever you want. You can live whatever you want. I met a pastor in Thailand who believed in that message. And his member asked him, if I go and shoot somebody and kill somebody, will I still go to heaven because of this gospel message? And the pastor said, yes, you still go. And you, it's okay, you can kill people. That is wrong gospel message. Because even though you saved by grace and through faith, but the way you live on earth would determine two things. If you do good, you have good life. Long life, see many good things. But if you live evil life, cheat people, commit adultery, watching pornography, taking advantage of people, do evil things, you're going to have a bad life because you reap what you sow. The spiritual law are set in motion. When you sow bad, you're going to reap bad. And not only that, the second problem is that when you do good, you have a lot of rewards in heaven. But if you do bad, you go to heaven without any reward. You go to heaven bare hand, no rewards. That's why that kind of gospel message is dangerous in the body of Christ. But I believe with all my heart that we save by grace, but we have to do good. We need to emphasize, we need to teach members that watch your life, don't go out to do evil things, but only do good because you're going to have a lot of good days, long life, and you shall get a lot of reward. Some of you may say to me right now, I don't care about rewards in heaven. I just want to enjoy life right now, cheat people, have more money, and, and just live wicked life, but I still go to heaven anyway. One day when you get to heaven, you shall have regret because you see your friend in the church have lots of reward. Big house, waterfront house, mansion, but you live in a shaggy house in heaven. And you, and that is for eternity. That is more important than here because this is short, relatively short. So you should care about rewards in heaven. If God cares about rewards in heaven, and he mentioned in the Bible so many times, we should care about rewards in heaven. We should start to do good from now on. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 7 to 8. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, Listen carefully. Whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same. Everyone say the same. From the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. When you do good, is it the end of it? No. When you do good to people, you do good to your wife, you do good to your kids, you do good to members in the church, to strangers, feed them, carry something for them, encourage them. When you do good to people, 
The Bible says you will receive the same good things that you do for them. Everyone say again, the same. same. For example, you spend time that you deserve to rest at home sleeping because somebody was so discouraged, losing something and very disheartened. But you are willing to spend your gasoline and money to drive to that person's house, be with that person, cry with that person, encourage that person for two hours. You help somebody. You sow the good helps. The Lord promised you. One day when you get into trouble, somebody is going to come to your house and do good to you and help you. How many people want a lot of helps? If you want to have a lot of helps, you need to sow a lot of helps. You sow five helps, you're going to reap 100 helps. If you sow 1,000 helps, you're going to reap 1 million helps. So if you need a lot of helps, instead of waiting for people to help you, you begin to sow helps, do good to people. It will be multiplied. Amen? Everyone say, seed time. time. Harvest time. time. If we help others, we will be helped as well. Amen? Amen. The topic of today's sermon is good works. If we want to live a long life, if we want to see many good days, we need to do good works. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same, everyone say the same. same. With the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. This is the spiritual eternal law of God. You reap what you sow. You smile to people, you get the smile. You love people, you will be loved. You help people, you will be helped. You give money to people, the money will be given back to you. This principle of sowing and reaping the same thing you do will come back to you. Amen? I want to summarize today. If we want to live in the goodness of God, we need to welcome the glory of God. We need to welcome the Holy Spirit. I'm speaking from experience. I welcome the file of God or the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit since 1995. Since then, so many good things happen in my life in every aspect. The goodness of God come with the glory of the Lord. It's so wonderful. That's why no one can stop me from laying on a hand, bringing the file of God to people because I know it's good for them. You come into the glory of God, let the glory of God fill you. So the goodness come with the glory. Not only that, we need to have a lifestyle of praising God and seeing the value of God all day long. Praise God all day long. Humble yourself. Trust God. Fear God all the days of your life. Trust God always. No matter what happened, don't argue with God. Don't use your own reasoning. Don't use your own understanding. Just say, I trust you, Lord. If bad things happen, I trust you, Lord. Good things going to come later on. And that's what happened to me so many times. Bad things happen, I just relax and trust God and give it the problem to Him. Then things turn around and good things happen. Because He's a good God. He will give good. If you trust God, you will not lack any good things in your life. And the Lord asks every one of us, do you want to live a long life? Do you do want to enjoy life? Do you want to see good in your life? What you need to do? One, watch your mouth, speaking only good. Even though right now your situation is very bad, you may lose your family, your wife, your husband walk away, maybe something bad happened to you, but the tongue is a rudder. When you begin to control the rudder, the boat will change direction. If the boat is small, it will change fast. When you change the rudder direction, the boat will turn quick. But if the boat is huge ship, it may take some time. If your problem is big and you keep speaking positive, it may not happen overnight. The ship will not change direction overnight, but keep speaking, keep speaking, speaking positive. Eventually, the ship of your life will change direction out of bad into the good. And you can do good to people, only you have good. So every Christian should believe in the goodness of God. Every Christian should expect the goodness of God. Every Christian should speak positive, stop lying, and begin to sow good. So that you can reap good. And when you reap good, you have good in your hand. We have good in our hand. We can sow good and keep sowing and sowing. And we can say glory to God. And people who receive the goodness from God from our hand will 
come to repentance and we be born again because the goodness of God flowed through our hand into them. You see why the devil doesn't like this message because from now on, if you can live like that, you're gonna be God's instrument because you have the good things of God. You can share the good things, and many people are gonna be saved. The devil hates that. The devil doesn't want people to go to heaven to be saved. Amen. The book of Ecclesiastes. I like this scripture, chapter three, verse twelve. I will read from New King James and Amplified Bible and NIV. Know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good. In their lives, New King James Version say that. In Amplified Bible, the Bible say, "I know that there is nothing better for them than to be glad and to get and to do good as long as they live." In NIV, the Bible say, "I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and to do good while they live." The Bible say clearly that there's nothing better for all of us to do except to rejoice, to be happy all the time, and to do good as long as we live on this earth. Everyone say there's nothing better. Actually, Amplify Bible expand a little bit to get and do good. God is good. He wants us to get good things from Him. We cannot give good to people if we don't have good in our own hands. So the first step is to get good from God by believing that God is a good God and He loves to give good things to us. Amen. And when we receive good things from Him, then we can give good things to other people, and we can do good for other people around us. And these good things include the spiritual good things. Like the word, the faith, the anointing, the wisdom from God, the joy of the Lord, uh, the favor of God, the open door from heaven—all the spiritual good things that we should receive from God. Coming to church is doing good because you come to receive good things from God. Going to care group, teaching the Bible, learning the word of God—all these are good. But God doesn't give us only spiritual good things. But he gave us material good things as well. He want to give us finances and material things on earth here, because you cannot do good things without both the spiritual good and the physical or material good. So we should be willing to receive both good things from God: spiritual good and the material goods. The Bible say that it's better to live on earth to do good things. Living on Earth is not just about making money. It's not just about having reputation and being known all over the world. It's not just about setting a good record that I am the biggest church in the world and I uh, can run the fastest in the world. It's not just about people knowing your name and make money and retire soon. Actually, living on this life means doing good. Why we are living on earth here? Somebody' life should be better when you are around. When you show up in your office, that office should be better because you do good to that company. When you join a church, the church should be improved because you come and do good to that church. When you move into the neighborhood, your neighbors will love you and be pleased because you bring good things to that neighbor, not chaos, not headache. You bring good to the neighbor. A lot of people live their life this way. They just keep worrying about themselves. They're just thinking only about taking care of myself, me, my, and my family. But if you just live that way, you are not living a better way because the Bible say it's better for men. To rejoice and to do good all the days of his life. So we don't just live for ourselves, but we live for other people. Do you know that our life is relatively short? We don't know when Jesus is gonna come back, and Jesus is coming back soon, according to his timetable. Because for the Lord, one thousand years is like one day, and I don't think he's gonna come back in one thousand years. He's gonna come back soon, and we don't know that we have tomorrow. 
A lot of us, if we know how many weeks left on earth here that we have, if we know exactly when we're gonna die, I believe that many of us will wake up spiritually and say, "Woo! I have only short period in this life now. I need to do something. I need to accumulate rewards in heaven. I need to get right with God now because my time is relatively short." So many people live on earth. As if they will live forever, so they keep procrastinating. Oh, I will do good later on. I will serve God later on. Let me fix my problem first. Let me uh, have enough money first. They just keep procrastinating because they think that they have many, many years in life. But actually, no one knows that how long we're gonna live on earth here. I believe that the reason God asked me to preach this series, the goodness of God to the church, because. God is getting our church ready to do major good in this city. Everyone say major good. Make your hand like this. Major good. Major major good. So, in order to do a major good to this city and to all over the world and to our neighbors and to our wife and kids and husband, we need to be willing to receive great goodness of God. We need to receive such a wonderful. Great things from God in our life now, so that we can give good things to other people. We should have a desire to receive the goodness of God into our life and let it flow out from our life to somebody else. In First Corinthians chapter 16, verses 14 and 15, I will read from three versions, so you can see different way. Let all that you do be done with love. Everything we do should be done with love. I urge you, brethren. You know that the house of Stephanus. I want to change that into your last name, the house of Supasatit, the house of Prelo, the household of Calkin, the household of Fisher. That it is the first fruit of Achaia, and that they, that household, have devoted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Read from NLT. And they are spending their life in service to God's people. In NIV, say they have devoted themselves to the service of the saints. The household of Stephanus were doing good for the households of God, or for the brother and sister in the church. Are there anything else better than doing that? The Bible say. There's nothing better for men than to rejoice and to do good as long as they live. The household of Stephanus chose to do good, to serve, to be a blessing, to make other people's life better as long as they live in that house. Let us have this kind of lifestyle when we join into the local church. Let us love one another. And let's come to the church with a new attitude, not the attitude that what they can do for me, what they can give me, what they can serve me. But let's come to the church with the attitude that what can I do good to them? Can I encourage them? Today I'm going to buy lunch for them. Let me show love to my brother and sister by doing good to them. And you know if we can do that. Many unbelievers we want to walk, join the church. Why? Because the goodness of God is revealed to you, in you first, and then through you to other people. They come to the church and they watch the lifestyle of the believers in the church. They see the goodness of God is flowing in every life, and then flowing to one another, and the goodness of God will lead them to repentance, not the message of hell, fire, and brimstone. Not the message of condemnation that's going to lead people to Christ, but the lifestyle of love and giving and doing good to one another that will lead people to repentance. They want to join the church, the family of God, instead of joining a gang, because everybody want to be a part of the family. Everyone want to belong to a group of people that love them and do good to them. Let us become that kind of church that we will love one another and do good to one another. When you walk into the church on Sunday, when you go to care group, your attitude should be 
What can I do to bless these people? Let us love one another in the family of God. The Bible says that the church is the family of God. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 15, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for whom the whole family, mean the church, in heaven and on earth is named. We are a family. We want to see more people join the family. What should we do? Condemn people, you don't dress nice in the church, you don't have a good hairstyle, you're such a sinful person. No. Let people join in because they see the goodness of God in the local church. Amen. And God wants us to do good to one another in the family. Maybe we can help somebody if you have a lot of money. You can help people to pay some of their bills that they don't have money to pay. Maybe you can take them to buy grocery. And maybe you can help them watch their kids because they need to go out to do something and they don't have, they are a single mom. Maybe you can pick them up to come to church instead of taking a bus. You do good to one another with the good that you receive from the Lord. The good material, the good money, the good anointing, the good things. I'm so glad that I was able to do good yesterday. Yesterday I was in the emergency room seeing a patient late at night. And while I was walking there, somebody called me, Dr. Mum. Uh, they know by my nickname. I turned around and saw a sister. The sister of this sister was sick, may need surgery, with a lot of pain, throwing up. And I walk in there. I say, I need to do good today. I cannot operate on you because this is not my expertise. I do only brain and spine. So can I pray for you? I pray and command in the name of Jesus that the kidney stone had to be broken down and no need for surgery. This morning, I walk into the hospital and I saw the surgeon who took care of this lady. And the surgeon said, suddenly she got better and no pain and she, I'm going to send her home. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I was so rejoicing to hear that she doesn't need surgery. You know, you build your faith, you build your anointing to go out to do good to people, pray for people, love, to, uh, love people. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you know that you were created in the likeness of God, in His likeness? God is righteous and God is good. So if we walk in His likeness, we should live a righteous life and we should do good to other people. We should follow the example of our master. Amen. Let's look at this scripture together in Luke chapter 16. This scripture talks about doing good with the materials we receive. Luke chapter 16, verses 1 to 9. He also said to his disciple, There was a certain rich man who had a steward. An accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him, mean the master called the steward or the manager, and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. He was fired, in other words. I can not dig, I am ashamed to beg, I have resolved what, what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into the houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and write 50. He is very cunning. God doesn't want us to follow this example, but we learn from this example, okay? We should not be cunning and cheating like this. Okay, then he said to another, How much do you owe? So he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill and write 80. So in other words, why he was having the authority, he used authority to cut down the debt of the debtors to his master, to get favor from the customer, okay, from the debtors. So the master commended, wow, the master put the thumb up, commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly for the sons of this world. This is talking about the world system, that people 
use their authority, what they have, and the money they have, are more short in their generation than the sons of light. They use the material things, the authority to do certain things for their own benefit. But and I say to you now, Jesus make a conclusion for believers. And I say to you, make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon. What is unrighteous mammon? Unrighteous mammon is material things. Your cars, your money, your bank account, your stock market that you have. Your unrighteous mammon that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. What is the message that Jesus tried to say here? In conclusion, he said that I bless you with material things, unrighteous mammon. I bless you with good car, good house, money, income. Why don't you use those things to make friends so that they will have everlasting house in heaven? So you use your money to do good to people that they would repent, turn around, get saved, born again, and go to heaven with you. And when you go to heaven and see them, they will greet you and welcome you into their house. In other words, we use material things to do good, to lead people to repentance. Amen? We are not talking about buying people. You know, sometimes missionaries that go to the third world country say, come to the meeting, we're going to give you a bag of rice. That is we call bribing people to come to church. We are not doing that. We are not bribing people to come to church or buying people to become a Christian, but they don't truly repent. I'm not talking about that way. I'm talking about doing good to people to win their heart to Christ. Amen? And whatever God gives to us, we should not be selfish, self-centered, and hoard it to ourselves and say, I'm going to enjoy my life. I have a lot of properties. I have a lot of money. I'm going to keep it with me and just enjoy when I get old. No. God gives to you all the good things so that you can sow out to do good to other people so that many souls will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 16 verse 10, the Bible say, this is in the context of money and material things that God has shown goodness to you. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. So God tried to tell us that as he blesses us financially, bless our business, but we are unfaithful. In unjust means we just selfish, keep it to ourselves. God's not going to give us more. But if we are faithful in using those good things to do good to other people, God is going to give us more and more and more and more so that we can do more good things to people. That's what the Bible tried to say. In verse 11, Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, in the area of money, finances, and material things, who will commit to your trust the true riches. What are the true riches? Definitely, the true riches are more valuable than money and material things. The true riches include your salvation, your healing. You can have a lot of money in the bank, but you may be in a nursing home and could not eat with a tube in your stomach because you're sick. True riches is the blessing from heaven of good health, anointing, Wisdom, the favor of God, the open door from God, the love, the faith. I rather carry faith because when I have faith, I can command the mountain around me and I can ask God to bless me and the things can happen supernaturally because I have faith. Faith is a true riches. Love is a true riches. The anointing, the glory, the presence of God. Lately, I ask God for more anointing this year. I say, God, year 2013, I want more anointing. I want to see that my ministry will have more signs and wonder happen. And that is true riches that you cannot buy with money. Some religious people will say that, oh, true riches are more important, are more valuable than material things and money. So you should be poor and you should not have money. That is a wrong teaching. In fact, God wants to give us both. God wants to give us both financial blessings, material blessings, and also spiritual blessings at the same time. So that we can be faithful in using both 
to bless people, to lead people into the kingdom of God. Do you know why we need both? Because it takes money to fly to Germany. It takes money for me to fly to Thailand. It takes money to set up the revival meeting in Bangkok with thousand seats. It takes money to preach the gospel. It takes money to cook and feed 70 people last night at my home. Last night I have about 70 people at my house. And it takes money to do that. But God gave Pastor Da and me the finances to be able to do that. So that we can be a blessing to people. So that we can show goodness to people. Some of you may say, Pastor, because you are a neurosurgeon, therefore you can say all these things. But you need to understand, I did not start from being a neurosurgeon. I started from being just a poor student like many of you. I started from nothing. I remember when I moved to another city <laughs> in Thailand, I slept on the floor. Pastor Dan and I did not have even bed. And we slept on the small mattress on the floor for three years. My dad and my mom did not have a policy to give us anything when we left home. No money. We start from zero. But when we got there to that city, we have little, little money in the bank. We never complain that we have little, therefore we're going to be selfish and keep ourselves. Her salary was about $150 a month. My salary as a neurosurgeon was $200 a month at that time, working for the government. So together we have $350 a month. And we began to tithe faithfully to the Baptist church. Amen. Then God brought in a lot of patients and miracles happened after miracles in my office. And then more patients come in. God raised our income to $1,000 a month. And we still tithe. And not only that, when the Baptist church need finances to build the fence around the property, the church doesn't have money to build a fence. We close our bank account and gave the whole money that we have that we saved for two years. We gave it to the church. We were not rich. We gave it all. But God blessed us for us to come to America. And when we came to America, we lived in the basement. No money. We bought a cheap car to drive, but we still tied. And eventually, we started the church in 1988. My salary at that time was about $1,300 a month. Pastor Dan cooked, feed people every Sunday. Some people brought food too. But we never complained about one word that we need to spend our money for the church. We don't even take money from the church. We use little we have. As we sow little, we reap. We have more. We sow more. We reap more. We have more. We sow more. We reap more. We never become selfish to keep everything for ourselves. Whatever we have, we sow out generously. Because we know that to do good, make our life see good things and live a long life. Two weeks ago, I heard that a surgeon in Overlake Hospital just died of lung problem. He is about my age. He never have a chance to retire. But I'm going to believe that I'm going to live a long life because I have been doing good. I have been sowing good. I keep speaking good. I want to live a long life, so I keep doing good and sowing good. So don't give me any excuses in this church that, oh, I am just a student. I'm poor. I don't have money. So I cannot do like you. You are a neurosurgeon. No, 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 no. I started from nothing. But God has been blessing me because I have been sowing good in my life. Amen? Let us have that decision that we're going to live a lifestyle and a habit of doing good. Wherever you go, you walk in and you think, can I do something for you? Can I help you today? What can I do for you? Can I have an honor to be a blessing to you? Can I have an honor and I can show love to you? We should live that kind of lifestyle everywhere we go. We should be a blessing to other people. Amen? Be happy. Be, everyone say, be happy. And do good. I think the Bible tried to warn us, don't do good with a grudging attitude, with a long face, but be happy and do good. Do you know that God is not excited about having a nice, expensive sport car? God is not excited about having a big home. What makes God excited? The Bible says, God delights in showing mercy. What makes God excited and happy is to be able to show mercy to you. 
to show goodness to you, to give you more finances, to give you more anointing, to give you more blessing. So why don't we do this? Why don't we come to God with this attitude? God, I have faith in you. You're such a good God. I want to make you happy. I want to make you excited. I want to make you delightful. So God, give good things to me. Amen? Give good finances to me. Give good health to me, good anointing to me. And then use me to be your representative on earth to do good to other people that don't know you because they don't know how to ask you anyway. They are not a believer or they may not have faith to ask you. But I have faith to ask you so I'm going to receive good things from you and then I will be your representative to make you even happier that you show good, you show mercy to me. Everyone say, God delights in showing mercy. Show mercy to me and then I will... Let you show mercy, your mercy to another person through me. Is that wonderful? Is that the way we should live? Come to God with faith and ask. And receive good things and then show goodness to other people. I don't know about you. I'm excited about this message. I want to live this kind of lifestyle. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 say, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty. Not to be selfish and prideful. Nor to trust in uncertain riches. Riches are uncertain. Stock market can crash anytime. But in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. We learn a few things from this scripture. Number one, God is not against riches. Two, God wants to bless you richly all things that not only what you need, but what you want. Listen carefully. God wants to bless you richly. Richly. Not just three meals a day, one blanket, and one bicycle for you to ride to work. No, just not what you need, but also what you want. So that you can enjoy. Everyone say, enjoy. How many fathers in this room want your kids to enjoy life? Is that right? You want your kids to be successful and enjoy life. You don't want your kids to suffer, have no food to eat. You want to bless them. The same thing that God the Father in heaven is not against riches. But the key is don't put your trust in riches. But put your trust in God. Everyone say, God wants me to enjoy life. Amen. How many people believe that God can give you richly All things that we can enjoy. But don't stop there, okay? The scripture doesn't stop there. Look at verse 18. A lot of people say, I cannot stop there and keep all the good things with me. No. Verse 18 says, let them do good. Do good with what? With all the things that God gives you richly. Do good. That they may be not only rich in money and material things, but rich in good works, ready to give, and willing to share. Wow, the Bible says the same thing. Do good, receive good from God, richly from God, and we will be rich in good works, ready to give anytime, willing to share anytime. And then what happened? The result, verse 19, storing up for themselves, a good foundation for the time to come. The foundation on earth here, you keep sowing the seed, you build stronger foundation for your future. But not only your earthly foundation, but also heavenly foundation that they may lay hold on eternal life. When you do that, you're going to receive, receive better and better harvest from God for foundation to do more good deeds in the future. And also, when you go to heaven, you get a lot of rewards. Not only that, we'll bring eternal life to a lot of souls. One day, I pray that all the members of New Hope International Church, when you get to heaven, I pray this is going to happen to you. Hundreds and thousands of people will run to you and shake your hand or do like this to you if they are Thai or they will do this to you if they are Japanese. If they are Chinese, they will have Chinese do it. Not like this. No. <laughs> if they are Chinese, they will come and say, Sia, 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 Sia. 
，上帝保佑你。Because you show good to me, because you give to the church, I am safe. I'm here in heaven. I know God told me that you give. You willing to give? You willing to share? I'm here, and hundreds of people come to you. Thousands of people come to you and say, "Thank you, thank you, thank you." a r i k o t o k o s a i m a s s e s e s e s e s e s e s e s e s e s e s e s Because of your giving, because you do good to people, and they're gonna have eternal life with you. Wow! I believe a lot of people are gonna come and greet you. Amen. <laughs> How you say thank you in German? Huh? t a k i s h i n Okay, I need to remember that word. <laughs> many German people will come to you and say thank you as well. Amen. How many people are convinced now that God is good? How many people are convinced now that God wants to show mercy and goodness to you? Amen. He delights in showing mercy to you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's receive goodness from God by faith, the true riches and the unrighteous mammon. What are we going to do with it? With those things? Share. Share. Do good. Amen. Rich in good works and bring people to eternal life with us. Let us get involved in building the local church. Maybe you are wealthy in this church, and maybe a small church in up country somewhere in Africa or in Thailand or somewhere need to have a land and a building. You say, "I pay that off for them. I pay off the building." You do good to build the house of God. You get involved in giving and ministering to people like the household of Stephanus. Amen. Are you convinced today that we should live that kind of lifestyle? Let's start that lifestyle from year 2013. Amen. That we're gonna receive good things from God. God open door for you for a new job, for a new promotion, for increased salary, for new business, and then you can have more to give to people. Let's be faithful in tithing. Let's be faithful in giving, showing mercy to people, and. Giving our life to other people. Let's have a lifestyle of coming to church, make other people's lives better, not to torture them and make them sad. Point to the person next to you. Your life going to be better because of me. Amen. As long as we live on earth here, the world going to be better. Amen. Let me add one more thing. You know why the Bible says there's nothing better. For men to do, except to rejoice and to do good, because your joy will brighten people up. Your joy will bring the happiness and goodness to people. And when you have joy, you are sowing the seed to heaven to let God to open the door for God to do more good to you. Because joy is a sign of faith. Joy is a sign of faith. So when you rejoice, you are happy. You're telling God, "I trust you. I don't worry. You're gonna do good to me." So that's why the Bible says clearly, "There's nothing better than to rejoice or to have joy or be happy and to do good. Both of them come together that you always rejoice." Are you ready to go out and do good? Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this teaching today to encourage us, Lord, that we can make you excited by receiving your mercy and goodness, Lord. And we can receive the true riches as we are faithful in the unrighteous mammon, and you can give us more and more and more to be the vessels of showing goodness to our relative, our loved ones, our friends at work, our friend in the same classroom, father and neighbors. Father, we pray, Lord, that your goodness will be revealed in our life and through our life, so that many people will. Repent and go to heaven with us, Father. Lord, shower your goodness upon this church, every household, every family, every single person in this room. Lord, give them the increase. Bless them indeed. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. So I believe next year we're going to have a better year. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah! How many people appreciate God so much? Hallelujah! <laughs> God is so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. 
any one of you in this room don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you may know Him, but you have walked away from Him for many months and many years, I'd like to encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ and start to live a life that follow God and do what I preach today. Keep your mouth from evil. Keep your mouth from deceit. And do good. Let the goodness of God flow to you. And you say, God, I want to commit my life to you. I want to love you. You know, Christianity is not religion, but it's about knowing God, knowing Jesus, and relationship with God. The Bible clearly say that true love is with commitment. All the teenagers in this room, listen carefully. True love is with commitment. If any man come to you and say, "I love you," but no commitment, that is not true love. True love is with commitment. Jesus loved us so much that He committed to die for us. That is a big commitment to die on the cross. The same thing. If you say you love Jesus and you want to walk with Jesus, you need to commit to read the Bible, to go to church, to serve Him. Just to have a lip service to say that I believe in Jesus, but do nothing about it. It's not a true relationship with Christ. True relationship. Come with commitment. All the single in this room, if you want to have a boyfriend and girlfriend, remember what the Bible say: true love must come with commitment. When I say to Pastor Da many years ago, I loved you, I commit to her to today. It's still her husband. Never cheat her. I still commit. Everyone say true love, true love. is about commitment. So if you don't commit to Jesus yet, I want you to have that relationship with Him by committing to Him, starting from today. Make a life of commitment to Jesus. Walk with Him. Go to church. Serve Him. Growing in the Lord. Would you like to pray with me to make a commitment today? Pray with me, Father in heaven. I know, Lord, that Christianity is not religion, but it's about relationship. You are love. You loved me first. That's why you committed to die for me, Lord Jesus. From today on, I want to have a personal relationship with you, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I commit my life to you because I want to love you. I will go to church. I will read the Bible. I will repent when I know that I sin. I ask you for forgiveness. I will serve you. Build my faith. Walk in love. Seriously, walk with you every single day. Thank you, Jesus. Please stay in my life. Be my God, be my Savior. Bring your goodness to me. Show your mercy to me. Turn my life around. Bless me physically. Bless my health. Bless my finances. Bless my emotion. Bless my family. From today on, I will rejoice. And do good for other people. Thank you, Lord. My life will never be the same. I will sow the good seeds, and I will reap the harvest of good. I promise you, Father, that I will keep my mouth from evil and from deceit, and I will stay away from evil. But I will do good. I will live a long life, have many good days, and enjoy life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We trust that this message is ministered to you. If you would like more information about New Hope International Church or other teaching CDs, please contact us at 206-275-1042. 
You may also visit our website online at www.NewHopeInternationalChurch.com. To them all gathered in your name, I lift to you.